journey and welcome to worship. It's good to be able to come together and worship together. I want to share with you from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And that's what we're supposed to do today. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And so I invite you today, as you are in your living rooms or wherever you may be, to get your slippers and your cup of coffee and enter into this time of worship today with us here at the Bedlington Core. So enjoy and let us worship together. <laughs>
I'm looking on the bright side because the sun has come out a little and it was meant to rain all day, so I get to go for a lovely walk and I'm enjoying that. Well, on the bright side this week, my wife gave me a haircut. How good is that? Cost me absolutely nothing. Looking on the bright side, I can still FaceTime my friends and I can still play Friday night games with them um, every week. Bye. Hi everyone, it's the birthday boy. 1947, many years ago, but I'm here living the dream. I've got two shout outs. The first one is to my lovely daughter and two grandchildren who visited me today to bring me a birthday cake, cards and presents. It was a lovely surprise, followed by another surprise from Margaret and Eric Byrne, who today serenaded me over the phone with happy birthday. What a wonderful day. Bye. This week we've been looking on the bright side. We've celebrated my birthday and had some nice walks in the sunshine. The best thing about this week is that I've now got a tidy garden to sit in uh, in preparation for having my family around soon. Lessons this week. Uh, normally on a night, Julie and I practice our instruments together, playing hymn tunes just in case the ISB or someone asks us to help with a virtual band. Uh, on Wednesday, we uh, had a page with uh, I Love Jesus on, I Must Have the Saviour with me, and I Surrender All. Uh, the choruses of each of these uh, tunes uh, came afresh to me as we remembered the words, I Love Jesus, He's my Saviour, Jesus smiles and loves me too. Then my soul shall fear no ill, let him lead me where he will. I will go without a murmur, and his footsteps follow still. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Saviour. I surrender all. Friends delivering treats to your doorstep. A telephone call or a message from so on social media from family and friends is something that lightens my heart at the moment. My granddaughter makes me really happy. Um, we FaceTime every other day and she reads to me. Um, I can choose the stories, but some of the stories that we've um, shared together have been really funny, she's hilarious, and we have such a good bond. And I'm thankful for that. Looking on the bright side, I'm currently getting about four weeks to the gallon in the car. A blessing I've had this week is when I received a packet to do the course that I wasn't expecting. It wasn't something that I'd ordered during the night. Uh, it was a packet sent to me and it was chocolate. You've got to love chocolate. We're very thankful to Amazon that sometimes uh, when you go on these walks and your favourite toys don't always come back, it's really nice when they come back bigger and shinier to the front door two days later. Is that right? Who was it? Well... So this week I'm grateful for a few things. We have a new nephew in the family, Adam Stephen Fagner, uh, was born this week and is doing really well over in Canada. It was also Harriet's birthday this week. And of course I was sad to miss Harriet's birthday, but looking on the bright side, the microphone that we got for her for a present is gonna be in London. <coughs> See what I mean? I'm sure you would agree people who aren't usually anxious could be at this time. Not knowing what to do to fulfill their day in with the children because their schools are closed, no church, no socializing. But I'm reminded in Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the centre of your life. I am confident because God is with us during this pandemic, that he is in control, and by committing each new day to him as it dawns, we can count on his guidance. Looking on the bright side, I've been able to camp on a school night. A 
has been a very strange time lately for all of us and I've missed my friends and the fellowship that we share together. And if there's a song though that um, we're going to sing and I would like you just to read this verse. It says, God is your wisdom, God is your might, God's ever near you, guiding right. He understands you, knows what you, all you need, trusting in him you surely succeed. I'm sure that we'll each succeed and look forward to seeing one another in the future.
the psalmist writes. Praise God with shouts of joy, all people. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Come and see what God has done. His wonderful acts among us. He has changed the sea into dry land. Our ancestors crossed the river on foot. There we rejoiced because of what he did. He rules forever by his might and keeps his eyes on the nations. Let no rebels rise against him. Praise our God, all nations. Let your praise be heard. So let's pray together. Abba Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are our Creator and our Counselor, guiding us daily. You are our Comforter in sorrow, in pain or distress. We praise you for drawing near to us when we draw near to you. You are the God who sees, and you are the Eternal Lord. You are our Heavenly Father, and the Father of the fatherless. How great are you and your faithfulness, God, day in and day out. You are holy, yet you made a way for us to approach you. I praise you for being our helper, and for your Holy Spirit's conviction, correction and protection in our lives. You are invisible, but we see you with the eyes of faith. You are Jehovah God, and the one who provides for all our needs. We praise you as our God who heals, and for being our faithful shepherd. You are not just King, you are King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, and yes, you are Jesus, the name above all names. With our whole hearts we praise you, God. You are Messiah, the soon and coming King. You are omniscient, you know all things. You are omnipresent everywhere, at all times. You are our peace, our protector, and the high priest who became our redeemer and sacrificed forever. You died to set us free. You rose again and gave victory over death. No longer need we be enslaved by sin. You are our salvation, our rescuer, and our refuge. You give hope within. All love, all praise to you, Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name in which we pray. Amen. Father God, we come to you at this difficult time. We want to thank you for being with us every moment of every day. Lord, we want to thank you for the technology that allows us to speak to one another and to see one another in these days of isolation. Lord, we want to thank you for the evidence of your spirit all around us, for the blossom that we see on the trees, for the lambs that we see in the fields, for the fact that each one of us at times where we've stopped to think about you have felt you ever so close. Lord, we thank you for those people who have reached out to help their neighbours. We thank you for those who have delivered food parcels, we thank you for those who have spent time praying and caring and helping your spirit of love to be in this place. Father, we ask that you be with all who need you just now. We ask for wisdom for those who make decisions. We ask for healing for those who are sick. We ask, Lord Jesus, for your comfort for those who mourn. Lord, we thank you because in all of this, we know that you have a plan. Father, we thank you for that plan. We commit ourselves to staying faithful and to continuing to pray that your spirit will descend upon this world in a new and glorious way. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you now to join with us as we say together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We have been asked to introduce this morning this song, This Is My Desire. It speaks to us about what is happening in the lockdown. My desire is to meet friends and family again. And that also brings us further to God.
rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Having a faith for me during this coronavirus has been really important. Um, one of the major changes for me at the beginning was having to work at Wandsbeck Hospital instead of North Tyneside. Now this was out of my comfort zone. Yes, it was nearer for me, but we're working with people that we didn't normally work with. We were working with people who were having cancer surgeries and trauma surgeries as opposed to routine day surgery. But the major changes were long days and also working weekends. And the thought of working a 13 hour shift on Palm Sunday didn't really appeal to me at all. On Palm Sunday we weren't really busy and I thought to myself, Lord, what am I doing here? Oh, we should be at the army waving our palm crosses and shouting Hosanna. And here was I walking a hospital ward and I thought, it wasn't the way it should be and I thought Lord what's going on but it did give me the opportunity to witness about my faith to the people on the unit at Wandsbeck so I thought Lord okay perhaps this is why I'm here and John and I also got the opportunity to witness that week by giving the children in the streets some little mini eggs I'm sure you've all seen the pictures on the windows of the rainbows of hope and we have some in our street so we just got some bags of mini eggs and put an easter message on to them put them through the doors and that was it now we've been in this house a year and a half and people have seen us in our uniforms but by doing this it was an expression of our faith and just to say thank you for cheering us up with the, the rainbows of hope so this led to people talking to us and pop, the children popping pictures through the letter box, which was lovely and cheered us up a lot. So we thought, you know what, we've got this coronavirus covered, you know, where we're, we're doing OK. It's given us a chance to witness to our faith and we're, we're chugging along nicely. I guess the Lord thought, you're chugging along too nicely here. And it soon became apparent that John wasn't feeling too well and he was showing the classic symptoms of the coronavirus. So we made a call to 111 who basically said yes, it sounds like he has the virus and we were sent for testing. On the Easter Sunday morning we watched the, the service online I'm sure with all of you and thoroughly enjoyed it and then we got the phone call. Hello, Mrs. Nickel, pleased to tell you your test was negative. However, your husband was positive for coronavirus. But, oh, this is a bit of a curveball here. It's not what we were expecting. This wasn't in our plan. But I guess John was more fortunate than some when he hear the news. It wasn't a nice virus to see him breathless, to hear him coughing. It was it was tough. But one thing I kept us going was the constant messages of support from yourselves, from our core family. We knew somebody was praying for him, for us, and that just known that that faith of yourselves, of us, he was being brought to God in prayer, and it helped massively. And we want to say thank you for that. Now we did have to change the way we um, we lived, the way we worked. And it was difficult, and I'm sure for all of you, you know, having to talk to your family through the windows, it's not what you want to do. But we've all had to experience this time of change. 
But one song that has remained with me throughout is the song, Don't Assume That God's Dismissed You From His Mind. Don't assume that God's forgotten to be kind, for no matter what you do, his love still follows you. Don't think that you have left him far behind. Don't assume you cannot give what he demands. Don't assume that God condemns you out of hand, for he gives to those who ask his grace for every task. Don't think that God will fail to understand. Throughout this coronavirus, our faith has remained strong and it has got through us some difficult times. And throughout all the changes, we can say, he, his love remains the same. He knows us by our name. Don't think because you failed him he despairs. For he gives to those who ask his grace for every task. God plans for you in love, for he still cares. It doesn't help to be negative all of the time. At least that's what my wife tells me all of the time. Apparently she thinks I'm negative. She says you just have to look on the bright side. And I've been thinking about that a lot recently. I mean, with all that's going on, it is easy to get negative. And maybe you've had that problem too. It's easy to feel down. The thought of looking on the bright side can easily be used as a joke. And even using it as a topic for this meeting or this sermon, uh, this message, I don't want anybody to think that I'm making a joke. I am not making a joke of this. It's a very, very serious situation, this pandemic and the crisis that we're going through. It's very serious, especially to the thousands who, who have lost loved ones and to, to the many that are still in hospitals sick and, and the many more to come who will be sick and, and possibly die. It's serious business and it's nothing to joke about. Look on the bright side though, it can be used as a joke. I mean, just look at uh, Eric Idle in the Monty Python's film, Life of Brian. The song is always look on the bright side of life and it drips of dry humor. I read where that song is uh, used in, in funerals, in many funerals here in this country. Please don't use that in my funeral, okay? Not a song that I want in my funeral. I want to just list a few things though where we can sincerely say Look on the bright side, because there is so much negative out there. And I just want to point out some positives where we can look on the bright side. So for one, the isolation has been tough on so many, especially if you're one who has had to self-isolate for weeks, uh, or you got the, the mandate that you had to be inside for 12 weeks. That is tough. But I want to say, look on the bright side. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I'm seeing that all around. Ironically, isolation is drawing us closer together, both as family units and as the church family. I mean, we're staying close, I think, like never before using video conferencing and then email and text and telephone. We're very fortunate to live in a time, aren't we, that, that we have technology like this to be able to stay in touch and do kind of this kind of thing. Um, very fortunate. Well, another thing is that, that this is a time of adversity and it's a time when we're having to do things differently. We're having to think outside the box, to rethink the way that we've done things over the many, many years. And that's not easy. 
But look on the bright side. We are turning to God like never before. I don't know about you, but I am. And adversity tends to do that. I mean, just look at the, the church in China that, you know, as repressed as it is, it's a church that is thriving. Look at Paul under house arrest in Rome. He writes, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now here's a man who knew hardship, and he writes to the church in Philippi and to you and me and tells us to rejoice, to don't be anxious, be gentle, pray, be thankful. These are things, these are the things he did in adversity and, and we're encouraged to do the same. He says, God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, not being together for church on Sunday has been a real challenge for me personally, as well as for many of you. Sunday after Sunday go by and the army hall is empty. It's kind of the reason why I placed the camera this way. So we're looking back at, at this empty hall here. It's so depressing, so frustrating. But look on the bright side. We not only get to share and worship together as the Bedlington Salvation Army here online, but worship experiences from all over the country and the world are available to us every Sunday and really every day of the week. Many I find are joining up with their, their home core on Sunday morning, you know, where, where they are physically here, but maybe their home core is another place and they're joining up with them. What a blessing it is for them to be able to join up with, with old friends and old faces that they know and, and, uh, and worship together with their home core. For quite a long time now, our focus in preaching and teaching has been our need to see ourselves as the church, not the building around us. So look on the bright side. Now is the time to put that teaching to work. The church is not about a building. Thank goodness, because right now this building sits empty most of the time throughout the week. It's about the believers. It's about you and me, the followers of Christ. And folks, the church is still alive and it's thriving. So look on the bright side. I understand that just using the phrase look on the bright side can sound trite and out of touch. It, it can be used to make light of the pandemic and the very real suffering thousands have gone through or are going through. And I see it all the time. I'm on Facebook a lot. I don't really care for Facebook, but I've got to be on there. And I see it all the time on there. People still making light of, of the pandemic. I don't see it as much now, but uh, I still see it. And it just makes my stomach turn when I see it. And and, um, and then looking at uh, the various things that we're going through with self-isolation and, and queuing it at uh, the grocery stores and the pharmacies and things like that and, and kind of making light of all of it. And I don't know, it's just nothing to make light of. It's, it's one of those things of where um, maybe my, negative, my negativity kind of plays into it. But really the pandemic, it's real. And it's going to affect our lives. Well, it does affect, affect our lives every day, but it's going to affect our lives 
for days, months, possibly even years to come. It's no joke. But it is also not a reason to lose heart. The psalmist said, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Psalm 62, 5 and 6. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken as you place... You will not be shaken. That's what I mean. You will not be shaken as you place your hope and trust in the God of our salvation. There's a song that I love, and it's by Don Mon. And it says, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way. May God richly bless you this day. seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my guide hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new It's fun.